Greetings, greetings. Uh, welcome to the Mixed Bag program on Precious X Radio and Raz Radio. Miss Dominga, how are you today? Doing really good. How are you doing, Prime? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure talking to you. I remember you interviewed me some years ago, and I, I never imagined that the tables would turn and I would be one day interviewing you as well, you know? So it's kind of yeah, it's it's interesting. Great, it's great to hear. Um, Tell me, were you were you born in the states? Are you or, or you were born in Mexico? I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Okay, so you're you're an American, really? Yes. Well, yeah, Native American. Yeah. Um, how was it for you, like you know, growing up in America, some like, let's say some forty years ago, going to school? I mean, how how was it? Because people, you know, Americans always have this like. This problem with with the you know um, other cultural people or, or other indigenous people. So how how was your life growing up as a child? Um, it's a lot easier than what it is now, but uh, back then it was kind of rough um, with the discrimination and racism and things of that sort. So yeah, I mean it's not as bad as what it is today, but about, about the same. Yeah. Um, because I remember, you know, as a as a as a child myself in in, in the UK, growing up, and the, the the black people were protesting. There was the marches with Martin Luther King, and they were being hosed down and beaten with clubs, and and uh, they had to force uh, desegregation in the schools, you know. So I mean, me me growing up in England, we never had nothing like that. So for me, it was like something out of another another from another planet, you know. It was like hard to like wrap my head around that, you know. Um, so I can imagine it was quite difficult, you know. Um, yeah. When, when, I mean, you're such a talented person, you do many, many things. Um, I know you're, you're, when I met you, I remember you told me you're a professional activist, and I was like, what's that, you know? <laughs> so, because <laughs> I never met anyone that, Gave me that sort of uh, title before. Then I'm a professional activist. I mean, I mean, um, but I do totally understand them, and I, I'm really in solidarity with all activists because I guess in my own way I'm an activist myself because I I refuse to accept that any other any human being should be treated different from another one, regardless of what a color, creed, and and wealth or whatever. To me, everybody's the same. So I totally understand, and. Um, and I, I totally, um, I'm down with, with all you guys. Um, well, growing up, you know, like in your teen years, when, when did you get attracted to, to, to music and decide that you wanted to do work, work with music? When was that? Um, well, I've been in music since I was five years old. My father got me into it. Um, being, um, from, well, they call us Mexican, but um, my father being... Mexican and music being within our, our family and friends. Uh, I've been singing since I was about five years old uh, with different bands. I live, uh, grew up in Saginaw, Michigan, so um, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Question Mark and the Mysterians. Not really, can't say I have, no. Uh, they had like a one hit wonder, it was called 96 Tears. My father was friends with them and a few other um, Mexican uh, musicians. So that's basically when they would practice at home or, you know, at family gatherings and, and parties and stuff like that. That's when I started singing a lot um, with them. So it, 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 that, that was born into you as part of your DNA? Yes. Okay. Um, so... Professionally, um, when did you get involved on a, on a on a professional level? How old were you, and how how, how did that happen? I was about uh, I think twelve, going on thirteen. I was living in San Antonio, Texas, um, part of a drama club in, in junior high. And uh, I remember I remember my music teacher. His name is David Kirsch, and uh, he took a very a very good liking to my voice and stuff. So um, we did a uh, we did a program for a really famous Mexican singer. Her name was Rosita Fernandez. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And she was retiring uh, from from music, so uh, we had a really big event for her. And within this event, um, Gloria Stefan was uh, invited. I love her. And yet one of the leading songs, so I was singing with her to sing for Rosita. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of when I got into pro. Um, Rosita wanted me, or Gloria Stefan wanted me to do some songs and go to uh, Florida. Okay. Um, she was with Miami Sound Machine at that time. I, and I remember that. my mother said no. <laughs> they couldn't travel. <laughs> Stefan, I mean, I, I need to buy some of her music again because I had a bunch of her stuff actually. Uh, I worshipped her. I thought she she was unbelievable, you know. And then she had a big accident and then uh, uh, with a car, I think. And then she came back after you know she recovered and came back. And I haven't heard from her for a while, but she's definitely up there among one of my all-time favorite um, uh, singers performers. You know, she was like electrifying. You know, so that's that's awesome, man. Um, I know, you know, I mean, now, you know, I've, I've known you personally for a while, you, you build amazing beats, and uh, you have an incredible voice, and and, uh, and you've been doing radio. How did you start, get started with, with this internet radio thing? Because you've been doing that for years or so. Uh, I, started, <laughs> I started that in, um, as just a hobby back in, in 2000, or 1999 I started, and I finished uh, right before I moved to to Egypt in 2010, um, but I did that just as a hobby with uh, about eight or nine different uh, people who, who also were doing it just as a hobby. Um, the internet radio station was named 5150 out of uh, Huntington Cap- or Riverside, California, Okay. and it was something that we just did and it evolved and it became kind of... Uh, popular, um, and some of those people, I mean, some of those people, are still going on today, right? With the with the radio. Yes, yes. Fifty one fifty isn't um, isn't organized anymore, but those uh, DJs from there um, are are still. Some of them are still broadcasting. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you have a, for me. I mean, you have a, an immense uh, knowledge of uh, technology and. How to do stuff? I mean, how is that just a natural thing for you to to, to gain all this knowledge um, and have this like in you know, the this this bank of, of of information? Is that just like a natural thing for you? Um, basically, the things that uh, being a jack of all trades—that's what I call myself—and and basically, a lot of my family, from my mother to my children, call me the same thing. It's just a um, different skills that I have acquired throughout the years that I know, you know, I use them to, to, to evolve myself and upgrade myself as a person. Yeah. Uh, the music coincides with the, um, with the social media. Um, the reason I know so much about social media comes from, you know, doing the internet radio. Um, the activism, I try to put all that together, um, it all coincides, it all, it all fits in my life, you know? Yeah, because one, and, one, one pushes, one pushes the other, I'd imagine, right? Yes, yes. Um, with the music, I can use that with my, within my activism, I mean, um, and to get people to understand and, and listen to different things that need to be paid attention to. And um, using the internet is a great way um, to touch people and get a hold of people, to contact and, and meet with people, to get them to understand what's going on. So, And I learned those traits from living in, in Egypt and being within the revolution there. I yeah. use those skills and talk a lot of people for those skills. Um, well, you know, it just all went 
I mean, I mean, I, I, I've met quite a few people, um, and I'm, uh, I mean, outside of the, of the people who work, like with um, with the technology, like that's their job. I mean, I have I have a friend actually I've been talking to for a while, Cesar, who's a Brazilian boy, who can actually build a computer. I mean, that's his. He went to the university, studied that, you know. But for, for like you, who, who you're coming from another another area. You're just like a person. You're an artist and and a, and a creative person. But you have all this bank of knowledge. And I have not met anybody like yourself who who's like the, let's say like a, a a music producer that has your knowledge. You know. So it's fascinating for me because every time I talk to you for like a minute, you teach me something that you know it would take me like you know some years to find out. So. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's not a. It's it's not. It's, once you get the hang of it and you you put yourself into to learning it, it's not really hard, you know. Yeah. It's not really really hard. And I, I guess it was like all things, you know. I mean, you just have to spend the time and put the energy into discovering um, more about it. If you, if you like it that much or if you love it, then you want to get on get 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 on with it and get to know more. So the more the more you put in, the more you get out. I suppose. You know? Yes. And, and the most rewarding thing is is that once you learn a skill, to be able to pass that on to somebody else. That oh, I mean, of that course. Is, as, as a person, you know, who, who taught uh, hair, hair, hairdressing to many people, definitely, when you, when, I, when you pass on your knowledge, it's the greatest feeling, you know, so I totally understand that, you know. Yeah, that's, that's the Native American in me, where the, the having, getting knowledge, accepting knowledge, and being able to give that knowledge back, it is... Uh, well, you know, yeah, like you, I feel that's the essence of life. I think that's what life is all about. I mean, because if you don't pass this this knowledge on, what was the point of learning it anyway? I mean, somebody passed it on to you, so so you know, you need to pass. It's like to continue the thing. You know, why would you stop it at, at, uh, with you? You know, when it was given to you, you need to give it to someone else. You know, it's like a, it's like a relay runner running with a baton. You know, you, you get to your place and then you need to pass this baton to the next runner. You know, that's. That's a cycle of life, I think, you know. Exactly. Um, we're going to take a short break. I'm going to play some music, and then we'll come back and continue this conversation, yeah? Yeah. 